What's up, family? Welcome back to the channel. Hey, today we're going to be looking at a whole lot of longshoremen content because a lot of people are starting to hate the longshoremen for going on strike, especially during this time where things are already pricey and we know that this current strike could drive prices up even higher. But hopefully by the end of this video, we'll have a better understanding as to why the strike is actually happening and who is the culprit. So you're going to want to stay locked in. Cause you ain't gonna believe this. I know I ain't said that a long time, but let's get to it. Good way to start a video off, ain't it? We're not falling for it, Cardi B. We're not falling for it, Offset. Sorry. We know the powers that be put y'all up to this. Sorry, we know about everything that's going on. We know the mayor of New York just got indicted and he has ties with P. Diddy. And we know that because right before he got indicted, he gave him the key to the city. We know that Russia is sending threats and NATO is preparing for a huge number of casualties in a potential World War III. We know that there are port workers about to go on strike and that spells doom for America. Because for every day they're on strike, that is supplies that are pushed back for an entire week. Meaning if they go on strike for even four days, it'll be a month of backed up supplies. We know that the current presidential candidates are doing everything they can pulling out all the stops to win this election. We are locked in as a country, as a people. We are ascending. We see everything that's going on. You can't run from this. No matter who put y'all up to this to distract us, to distract the people, to create drama, you can't run from this. The people see through this. We know everything that's going on and we are locked in. Sorry. It's crazy because no, I, I haven't heard anybody talk about Diddy. Uh, yes, they tried this with the Cardi B and, and Offset thing, but everybody's locked into this strike because it, 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 it could very well and probably already f possibly affecting people right now. So, yeah, man, we're not, we, as, as the people, we are way past the celebrity thing. None of that even matters anymore. The kids are paying more attention to that because they don't even understand what's happening with this strike. Some do, some don't. That is crazy. While we're sitting here worried about the strike, as people got real problems right now. Yo, this is the job that they're going on strike for over there in the east. Look at how easy it looks. I'll do this for half of what they're making. They're making over 150000 a year doing this. What about the truck drivers? Look at how they have the truck drivers waiting for a load. Look, none of them have work. And what about the groceries? Everybody's groceries are going to be going through the roof. It's going to be bad, guys. Look at this. There's no boats. There's no boats at the docks. No work for nobody. This is bad, guys. And it's all because... The union leader wanted to go on strike. They're being greedy right here. They're being greedy, being selfish, because all the consumers are gonna end up paying for this in the long run. This is bad. And it's this guy right here, he's coming up, look it. This is bad, I'll do this job for half their pay, to be honest. Where do I apply? This guy right here. When my men hit the look it, he has a $900,000 salary. He has a gold chain, lockdown. Cartier glasses, you know what's gonna this dude's selfish. Second. This is the problem right here. First week. I honestly agree with him when he said that the union boss is the problem. But there's a big misconception about how much longshoremen get paid. And longshoremen and, and port crane operators are two different things, okay? I think I'm on to something, y'all. Y'all remember the Illuminati car game, right? Nobody talks about this specific car. I remember how I be telling y'all to be putting the truth in plain sight, right? Look at this. Now, I know y'all remember when they were talking about the demon syndrome, how people could be able to see, like, people's face morphing and shit like that. If you didn't look at it, look it up on YouTube or something. You mean? For those who know, that might have been a sign of something, y'all. First of all, that only happened about six months ago. And we probably all forgot about it, right? Look how many other events that the card game played out. Peep this. Pay attention to this shit, y'all. It's crazy, yo. It told us. It literally told us. 
repeat, just pay attention. The moon landed. Yo, Pete, pay attention to all the cards, y'all. Screenshot whatever y'all need to do. Look at that. Oh, he about to zoom in. Screenshot. D. I'm telling y'all, yo. And y'all gonna see what's the last card, too. It's crazy. Oh, man. Y'all remember these, yo? I'm telling you. Yo. Yo. This, did y'all see that? This is for entertainment purposes only, you feel me? Oh, my God. I think I'm on to something. That this they strike, have the capital to settle this thing. You worry that this strike is going to hurt the everyday American, the farmers that need to reach the, reach the export market. They're it's telling a, me that they're going to hurt the farmers. Start them. to realize who the longshoremen are, right? Nobody cares. People never gave a about us until now, when they finally realized that the chain is being broke. Now, cars won't come in, food won't come in, clothing won't come in. You know how many people depend on our jobs? Half the world, and it's time for them, and time for Washington to put so much pressure on them to take care of us, because we took care of them, and we're here 135 years and brought them where they are today, and they don't want to share. I'm telling you, he's tricking them into doing it, because think about it. If automation come, not only are the longshoremen jobs are in jeopardy, his job is too, because then he won't have a union. Did you know that asbestos has a magnetic field and just like mercury, it has properties that are dangerous, but also can store and generate energy and electricity. Maybe this is the reason why it became totally banned when once we used this element in abundance. For now, after the 50s, this reasonably safe element was completely forbidden now there's many forms of asbestos and only a few of them that can cause actual harm they claim it causes cancer just like everything else 2000 years asbestos has been used in houses it's only recently that it's been totally asked in fact, it was used to capture energy and photons from the sun. Just like we use solar panels today. And that's why they had this idea to, why don't we just remove all these elements from the periodic table that can potentially harness photonic energy and leave the humanity with a lie that these things are dangerous for us. The reason why they're dangerous is not because they're bad for our health, but because they create such vast amounts of energy. And therefore, they do not want you to touch this. They don't want you to know. Did you know that asbestos was used in the Wizard of Oz as part of the fake snow? Sometimes I imagine the Wi-Fi being sort of like the new form of asbestos. My granddad worked on ships that had asbestos for 20 years and nothing happened to him. People acting online as if it's some form of like nerve agent is just preposterous. Like this dude is rubbing it with a sanding block, like casually. Yes, people used to throw snowballs at each other full of asbestos. Get over it. It's not that bad. But, disclaimer, you do not want to inhale the fibers from asbestos. Nor do you want to inhale mercury or radium or any of those elements for that matter. Because they're not meant for internal use. They are only purposed for contained forms of energy i don't know if that's true or not gotta have some medical examination back behind that one last time i checked it was killing people in the chicken business oh yeah okay yeah. so you know all the dirt about the chickens yeah. man. Yeah. 
There, I don't eat chicken. I don't eat chicken either. No. Chicken's a sponge. Okay, it doesn't taste like anything other than what you put on it. Yeah. Okay, from barbecue sauce to Italian sauce to whatever. Yeah, it's a good source of protein. That's, That's it. it. That's it. That's it. There's no okay. nutrients in it. Go to the store, go to the deli section, and then look at your chicken roasts that are 16% protein, 17% protein, 20% protein, okay, and it all gets more expensive as you go up with the protein because it's got less water and less crap, but it's still full of water and crap. You never buy it if it's in a box frozen. You never buy it in a box in a bag. You never buy it if it's frozen at all. Okay? If you can buy anything, you buy air chill chicken because it's got the least amount of money. The entire food business, we're the best magicians that you've ever seen in your entire life. <laughs> because we make you believe and buy that's not good for you. Yeah. Mr. Harold Daggett, I got something for you. I got news for you, homie. Your little planned sabotage of fucking with our port, causing distress within the American economy and trying to hold our economy hostage, it won't work. This isn't a game or some type of reality TV show. Y'all sitting up here thinking that this is a game to play with our economy in the ports right before our election? Huh? Okay. Allow me to remind Americans what the former president Franklin D. Roosevelt said, and I quote, in politics, nothing happens by accident. And if it happens, you can bet it was planned that way, unquote. I sure hope the union workers are getting their satisfied pay. I'm hearing the average dock worker earns about $150,000 a year. Maybe I'm wrong, but someone please triple check that for me. Check them out and comment below. Meanwhile, Mr. Harold Daggett is requesting an increase of 77%. The government offered 50% and he flat out rejected it. This folks is called election interference. And we all know Trump is pushing this strike. We're not stupid. We're still voting for Kamala. Put down your phones. Pick up a ballot. Deuces. Why everybody want to blame Trump? <laughs> because this clearly is an old picture of Trump because he looks a lot younger there. And his, whole, his hair ain't as orange. Which makes me think that because his hair is as, the color it is now, and maybe that's dye or something, because it's clearly like a whitish gray right there but that's neither here nor there but i agree with him when he said that that boss harold daggett he is the reason why he's doing this for his own selfish reasons he's doing it for his own selfish reasons remember during his interview he said i'll cripple you i'll cripple america he, he understood the power in that but he's putting a lot of longshoremen jobs at risk I'm a union worker, so I can relate to this. These people that work the ports from Maine to Texas, they make a base salary of $81,000 a year. That is not what they make. With overtime, they can make up to 200,000 plus a year. Now that's a guy coming in off the street. No education, no nothing, gets hired on, joins the union. He makes a base salary of 81,000 up to 200,000 plus, no education. Our union, we have the same thing. We make a base salary of about $90,000, $100,000 a year without overtime. With overtime, we're looking at $120,000, $140,000, $150,000, up to $200,000 a year. Same thing. In our contract, we get 2.5% a year, 2.5% raise over six years. That's a 15% wage increase over six years. So right now, off the street, you're looking at around $35 an hour. That's off the street when you hire in. These people that are going on strike at these ports are wanting a 77% increase for the next six years. He's all the way wrong. Now, when you're thinking about brain operators at the port, right? Yes, they come in making like $29, $30 an hour. But it's all dependent on skill level. I'll say base pay for unskilled is probably about twenty nine to thirty dollars an hour. But if they got skill, it's like thirty five, almost forty dollars an hour, skill wise. Then you got the yard jockeys that work on the port, uh, that drive the terminal tractors, and they probably make twenty twenty five dollars straight through the door. But the regular ones that's walking around using their feet. They're not making that kind of money, but the danger still exists. 
I think even more for them because they down there on their feet. I mean, one of those cranes could easily drop one of those containers on one of those workers that's walking around down there. So, yes, I get it. He's wrong. He's thinking about crane operators, people who are operating stuff. Yeah, they make good money working there, but that's that's not a lot of them. It's more longshoremen on feet than it is people operating cranes. Those, jo those jobs are hard to come across. So, I mean, you know, you got to really put everything in perspective, man, and he's not doing it. But we're going to continue watching the video. That's 12.8%. Basically, they're wanting to be making $90 to $120 an hour. $150,000 base salary up to, let's say, over $300,000 a year. Off the street, no education, no certificates, no nothing. Just off the street, come make this money. 77 percent their union negotiated said they would do 55 percent that still puts them at 60 or 70 dollars an hour and guess what they turned it the fuck down how many of y'all would like to go to a place unloading ships and make 60 to 70 dollars an hour off the street that's absolutely insane 77 percent you're going on strike because you wouldn't take the 55 percent so you don't you don't want to make 60 or 70 that's not good enough you want 90 100 110 dollars an hour 120 dollars an hour people like like me that work in these paper mills power plants these chemical plants that are around asbestos that you're around chemicals that cause cancer people are dying at 50 60 years old because their lungs are disintegrated can't breathe but you know what? We don't go on strike because we got families to feed. We don't go on strike because we signed that contract. That negotiated contract that we agreed to sign to come work for. So all of y'all, and on top of being a part of a union, you've got pension plans. You've got 401ks out the ass. You've got the best insurance in the world. You've got some great shit that go with your, your, your wage. And you have an opportunity to make up to $200,000 a year. So yeah, for, for people like me and, and, and people, it, it, it kind of rubs you wrong because they're on strike down there wanting $120 an hour off the street. That's insane. Well, y'all hearing my take on that. What y'all think? This foreign company, Merck, tries to shove fully automated terminals down our throats. And for what reason? To eliminate good paying American jobs. And where is our government in all this? President Biden declares he wants to protect American companies. How can this administration allow foreign companies like Maersk to get away with this? Mark my words, there's going to be an explosion. And the ILA and the doctors around the world are going to light the fuse. I that was in 2023. But he had this plan all along. It's all about automation. That's what it's about. And I would like you to repeat after me so we can just get ahead of this now. All right, join me. In seven hours, if the longshoremen, which are the dock workers, start striking across like 30 of the United States' biggest ports on the East Coast, if that leads to shortages in stores or prices becoming more expensive, we are not going to blame any of the workers for striking. Who are we going to blame? Because there's someone to blame. We're going to blame the, say it with me, the U.S. Maritime Alliance, which represents all of the major shipping companies, by the way, I think almost all of which are foreign owned, for holding the U.S. economy hostage so that way they don't have to. Let me just check my notes here. Pay wage increases and guarantee against certain jobs being automated away. Okay? We are going to blame the employers, because the employers have the profits to pay their workers, and the workers deserve to have more of the money because the workers are what the people who work overtime, who work in bad weather, who work in all kinds of conditions to get us all the kinds of things that we need and want. They've done their part. It's time for the employers to cough up the fucking money. So we will stand with those workers, no matter how long it takes, because they have stood with us forever. Well, I stand with the workers. But people do know that they offered them 50% increase, but they want a 73% increase over, 
what i think it, over years i don't know how many years but but they turned down to 50 percent. they could have just took that and went on about their business just i, I think union sometimes makes things hard and negotiation is one thing but then when you try to over negotiate then you're doing too much because you got to think about it that 50 percent or that 70 something percent isn't just going to one dock worker that's 45,000 dock workers or 80,000 dock workers spread it out the united states so that's a lot of money yes you got 10 billion dollars they make billions and billions of dollars but that's as a collective not just one dock as a collective these docks make that kind of money so i mean yes it's a lot to us because we down here broke as hell and we hear billions and that sounds like a lot of money but then you got to think about the investment that it takes the money that it takes to put back into the dock to keep it running yes those billions are warranted they have the money but if they pay you this a certain amount of money how can they keep the dock you know safe for you think about it what if one of those docks decides to just cave in and fall into the ocean while the workers are there that's lives lost so you gotta you gotta think about that they have to compensate for what they can pay you and for what they make and all this stuff has to be factored in so it ain't as just simple as just paying people but if you know business you know that's how it works just think of it as you running a business and i'm not gonna rant but just think of if you had a business and your employees wanted more money but you gotta pay for supplies and all these different things right here to keep your business running you can't pay them like that but you give them a 50 percent raise but they, they they wouldn't take it i mean come on now oh they got my bubble this morning all over the garage you know what they were talking about my union brothers and my union sisters they were talking about donald trump saying that there was going to be no tax on overtime well i had to dig into this a little bit and i found this read it read it because you don't know this my union brothers and sisters they are basically taking your hours and making it a 160 hour work month you know why he's saying that there's going to be no tax on overtime, guys and gals? Because there isn't going to be any. That's right. We live and breathe off our overtime. It fuels our lives. And this, this traitor that you plan on voting for as a union brother or sister is going to take that away. No more overtime. So, of course, there's not going to be any tax on overtime because it's not going to be there. Also, I would like to take this moment to say that I support the Longshoremen of America. We, the IBEW, have your back. Have a day. Now, he said all that, but the same people that he voting for ain't even went down there to fix this problem. They ain't even went down to intervene. Haven't even been down to check on the people in South Carolina. I'm just saying. Anyone who doubts the ability of automation and cars driving on the street and avoiding dogs and people and cats, just take a look at all of this automation right here. It's going to happen. And Tesla's going to be the leader, baby. Believe it. Look how this thing lines up perfectly right here with this other one. Then this will come and pick it up and put it over here and the driver will pick it up two cans at a time and put it on the ship. Let's go Elon. Let's get your shit together. And let me say that crane operator was still being operated by a man. So I'm not sure if those jobs are going to be replaced by autonomous or automation either but i'm just saying that stuff is inevitable that stuff is inevitable if these companies don't have to deal with people striking because they want more money by using automation <laughs> yeah automation is inevitable i mean learn how to fix them that's all i can say get ahead of the game let's talk about these longshoremen striking 
They're striking because they want more money. <laughs> Apparently, $147,000 a year is not enough. And the scumbag who's leading the strike? Yeah, he made over $900,000 last year, and he drives a Bentley and has a 76-foot yacht. Hey, guess what? I understand your plight, but you guys are making $147,000 a year plus another $30,000 in benefits. Get to work and don't screw the American people over. You've probably seen that the International Longshoremen's Union has gone on strike, which has pretty much shut down the ports from Maine until Texas. What exactly is going on here? Hi, I'm Jim, a financial educator at WalletHacks.com. Follow me and I'll help you sound smarter than your friends. The ports shut down, products are gonna have a hard time making it on the East Coast, which means we might see some supply chain problems. Things may become harder to get, they may become more expensive depending on how long this lasts. But what's really behind the strike? Is it really about pay? The union, the ILM, wants a 77% wage increase over six years, but the other side has agreed to a 50%. And it sounds like, oh, that's not such a big deal. Also probably see that the lead negotiator, the chief guy, he's making $900,000 a year, while the average for the dock workers is around $140,000. These are all head fakes. These are all marketing, trying to get you to think that they're being greedy. The real reason that they're going on strike has to do with automation. The union doesn't want automation and the docks, they want automation. As you can imagine, if you're a longshoreman and they're talking about automating your job, that you would actually be a lot more fearful about that than of whether you're getting a 50% or a 70% pay increase over six years. That's really what's behind all this. And automation is something that is coming for a lot of jobs and I think they're just trying to stave it off for just a little bit. The challenge is that we actually have fully automated terminals in California. And after a study, they saw that about 5% of the jobs were lost. To be honest, I completely understand it. If I'm working a job and I'm afraid that it's gonna be replaced by robots, I would like some assurances that I'll get retrained, that I'll get additional work somewhere else, and I'd like to be paid a little bit more now so that I can save. Either way, now you know that it's really about automation and not about the difference between 50% and 77% over the next six years. That that's fine, but they're worried about their jobs and less about whether or not they're getting it enough of a pay increase. Whether that's right or not, that's not for me to say. I'm not in that job, I rely on them, and I think they're very important. And so I would like the strike to end at some point and for goods and services to be able to be provided to Americans that need it. If you enjoyed this explainer, follow me for more or you'll never see me again. But longshoremen are already making $150,000 a year. No, they're not. No, they're not. The data says that somewhere north of half of longshoremen in New York City are bringing home $150,000 a year. There's so many things wrong with that. First of all, they picked New York City, the notoriously cheap place to live. That was sarcasm. The most expensive fucking place in the country to live, if not like top two, New York City. They picked the data from there. So there's that. Somewhere north of half, so not all, are bringing home $150,000 a year, but the highest paid Longshoremen in New York are making $39 an hour. That's $81,000 a year. They're making enough overtime to literally double their wages. If you work that much overtime, it's not a happy life. And also, I doubt in the context of modern times when every blue collar job is chronically understaffed that they're like, oh, I'm gonna work all this overtime and make all this money. I bet in order to keep their jobs, they're being forced into taking on extra shifts and extra hours because no one else is going to step up and do it. And I doubt everyone who makes $150,000 a year in New York is like, oh yeah, I just love working 80, 90 hours a week. I love it so much. So there's that, that no one is making $150,000 a year of the people who they named in the city that they named in these stupid fucking news articles. Now consider that longshoreman is not the only job title held by dock workers. In fact, I'd be surprised if it was even like the majority of dock workers were longshoremen. And these dock workers are mostly not in New York. New York is a relatively mid-sized port. The biggest one is in Texas, where the wages are real bad. So. It just, when you see someone say, they're already making $150,000 a year, no, 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 and they're just being, no, they aren't, they aren't. And that person is either trying to trick you into believing something that benefits them, 
or they're just as ignorant as the as you are for believing them and as ignorant as most of the people who read these stupid sensationalized news articles that just pull numbers out from niche little corners of the number exists and it, we can make it look bad so we're going to because we are the news and we get bought out by every single corporation ever. That's it just can you stop saying they make $150,000 a year, please? Because no one signed a salary contract and is like, yeah, I'm making 150 grand for doing a normal amount of work at this job. That is good. Not a single dock worker is doing that. 50% pay hike. ILA Union President Harold Daggett is leading the strikes as long presented himself as an advocate for blue collar workers, but we are learning more about his own salary. Last year, he raked in $728,000. That according to union filings from the Department of Labor. Now for comparison, the average union dock worker makes $81,000 annually. Daggett also reportedly owning a yacht and driving a Bentley. The wow. strike effectively shuts down dozens of ports from Maine to Texas, blocking everything from food to car shipments. And it could cost the economy an estimated four and a half billion dollars per day. Former President Trump addressing the strikes. Listen. Those workers are very important to the lifeblood of our country. And it's a massive thing. But don't forget, they've been hurt very badly with inflation. You know, they're not happy and they do a good job. The White House says President Biden will not invoke the Taft-Hartley Act, which could temporarily end the strikes on the grounds that the port shutdown poses a threat to national security. Well, I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave it here. As you can see, like I said, that man, the union boss, is leading the dock workers to a bad place. All because of his selfish reason. Yes, it's because of automation. But I'm pretty sure there was something else they could have done instead of putting the entire country at risk and harm's way. Like I said, they did agree to pay them 50% increase, but the union boss turned it down. And it makes you think, like, what for? Why? Did all the dock workers disagree on that? Or did they just follow him because they believe in him? Because I'm not even sure when was the last dock worker strike or if they have ever striked before in the past. So I don't know, man. Sounds kind of fishy to me. And then you got the president, the current president, not wanting to intervene. Why not? He can put something called a, uh, what is it? A taff, taffle something on them and then they'll go back to work. Because this is really going to cripple the economy for real. Like, if anybody should get paid or a contract should get agreed upon, it should be the dock workers. It should be the longshoremen. Like, they should get whatever they asked for. But they gave something to them, and then the union boss denied it and said, no, nah, we're not taking it if we don't get 70-something percent. It's crazy. I think it's unjustified. It's, they're justified in wanting a better pay or better wages, yes. But all this extra stuff, I think 70 Three percent is just overdoing it. It's just overdoing it. But then that's just my opinion. I could rant all day, but I won't. But like I always say, do what you will with that information. And hey, if you like what you saw, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you know when I upload. Get in the description, follow all my social media, and remember, challenge the argument and not the person.